Let's take a walk through the code in this LabVIEW project. We'll begin by reviewing the overall structure of RT main. The VI begins by registering interrupt sources on the digital input as well as the analog input. In the main loop, we pull a control. This is an analog, analog slider, and that causes the analog output to assume a value between 0 and 5. We also pull a control for the digital output so that way we can set it either high or low. We pull at 10 times per second, and then once we're done with that, we unregister all of the interrupt sources. Let's take a look at some of the details. Each interrupt event needs to be associated with what we call a callback VI. For example, process 0 is the callback VI for the digital input. Process 1 is the callback VI for the analog input. We can find both of those located in the Project Explorer. The callback VI needs to have an ID for the interrupt request number. It's an unsigned 8-bit integer, and I'm reviewing here how to go about connecting that up into the appropriate place on the icon pane. Simply place the control somewhere on its own in the block diagram. I'm using a feedback node to preserve the state of the LED output, which is inverted, each time the callback VI is called. So process zero is manipulating LED zero. Process one is essentially identical, except it manipulates LED number one instead of LED zero. Each time you see a transition on the LED, you can tell that you've detected an event. Let's locate where the functions may be found on the various sub palettes. Look under My Rio, and then the low level sub palette, and then Interrupt, and these are all of the low level interrupt functions. We see registering a digital input, registering an analog input, unregistering an event, and then the callback VI reference. When you first place that, you see the question mark. Simply double click it and select the appropriate VI to serve as the callback VI. Let's take a look at some of the details of registering a digital input as an interrupt source. We have the IRQ number. That needs to be a value between 0 and 7. We have the channel name. You have MXPA digital inputs 0 to 3, as well as the onboard button available. The digital input type can be either rising or falling edge or both edges. You can also determine how many edges you need to see before you declare that an event has been detected. The easiest way to do this is to create a constant and select the appropriate interrupt source. Let's move on to setting up an analog input as an interrupt source. I think the easiest way to grasp all of the possible controls here is to look at the ExpressVI version of registering the interrupt source. You can choose from this ExpressVI, any of the different types of interrupt sources. So of course, of course, we're looking at analog right now. And this nice graphic highlights some of the options in terms of setting the threshold and hysteresis, for example. Finally, you can unregister all of the interrupt sources using this for loop, provided that you have done sequential numbering of the interrupt numbers.